my absolute favorite things to go after out west probably has to be mule deer. Now I've gone all over the country and the cool thing about mule deer is they are everywhere. All the way from Canada, across North America, all the way down into Mexico. And on this episode, I'm gonna take you on a journey going after mule deer all across the country to different types of hunts and all sorts of different experiences. But the one thing in common, it's all mule deer, all show. Now this first episode was actually my very first mule deer hunt ever. I had gone out to Colorado and I didn't have a huge area to hunt. In fact, I had a very small location, but we knew exactly where the deer were coming through. All it was was a travel corridor, so we knew if we set up and we were patient, we could get a beautiful buck. And wait we did, and the beautiful bucks came. It's time to fast forward to November. The temps have dropped, the rut is on, and I've got a rifle in hand. Colorado is really a hunter's paradise. They have a ton of different animals, but on this trip, well, I had one goal in mind, and that was to go after mule deer. Now, I've never had a chance to take a really big mule deer, and well, let's face it, if you're looking to get a big muley, Colorado is the perfect place. It's behind a tree right now. Can you see him? I don't have a shot right now. <laughs> he was playing cat and mouse. I'd have the shot, no shot. Moving around. <sighs> what a beautiful buck. <sighs> Finally, after many days of patience sitting here, it all worked out. Beautiful, beautiful deer. We've got more bucks here. There must be a hot doe in there. And like that, the switch flipped. <sighs> wow! <laughs> this is a cool buck. Wow! Now I'd love to tell you that, hey, I saw this unicorn buck way far away and I wanted him. But I had no idea. This wasn't just a small point. He had a big point coming right out of the middle of his forehead. Nothing like having an added surprise and being super happy walking up plus getting the nice big extra bonus. This segment was brought to you by Sportsman's Alliance. Our heritage, our fight. Protecting hunting from coast to coast. Did you know that not a single North American animal has gone extinct due to regulated sport hunting? In fact, because of license fees, taxes, and non-monies generated by hunters, there's better habitat and more animals than ever. In 1900, there were approximately 500,000 white-tailed deer. Today, there are more than 32 million. 50 years ago, only 12,000 antelope remained. Today, there are more than 1 million. Just another fun fact showing how sportsmen and women are helping make a difference. Wrapping up Colorado, that was an incredible hunt. How many people can say they've shot a mule deer with a big unicorn point right out of the top of his head? Well, next up, we were heading to Alberta for a spot and stock mule deer hunt with a bow. Probably the most difficult way to go after muleys, but I knew we were gonna have an awesome time and hopefully we could connect. Now I was doing an early season hunt. I was gonna be going to Alberta for some great mule deer hunting. Now I've heard all about the big giant mule deer up there and the numbers of mule deer. But once I got up there, well my jaw about hit the floor. There were mule deer everywhere. And the coolest thing about Alberta, well you know you've arrived when you see all those windmills. Okay, yep, yep. Straight on 60. Bat, hey! Hey! Bat! No, he's gone. Now we're talking 60 yard shot. I just wasn't comfortable. My pin hadn't got settled yet. And the next thing I know, this buck is bounding off and there I stand watching a giant Alberta mule deer run away. I probably had the chance to take that shot, but it's just one of those things. Things happen quick, and I wasn't quite ready. 60 yards is a long shot. I've been sitting here waiting for him. 
And this brush is just a little bit too high. Is that 60 yards? 60 yards is a long shot, especially when you've got wind to factor in. And I'm a confident believer that if you're not completely steady, don't squeeze the trigger until you're ready. Now we had spotted some nice bucks that morning. We were watching several different areas and I thought I saw a buck's antlers out in the middle of this field. But as we got up there, it didn't look like this buck was anywhere around. And there were hay bales out in the field. So I thought it'd be a great idea to hop up on one of those hay bales and try to look down and see in there. Is <laughs> this... <laughs> Spring? I don't think he's here. <laughs> oh, he's right there. Come here, Melissa, come here. Right here. I love you, shit. How does that happen? <laughs> and this was the buck we had been after. He was right there, within close reach, but completely gone now, and who knows where he went. This was my big chance, and it didn't work out. And that's hunting. I was happy, got some great stocks in, and I was hoping I could use it in my knowledge base to hopefully go on the next hunt and put those skills to good use. Gear Rundown is brought to you by Analogics. Protect your deer herd with the power of science. When it comes to bow preferences, well, there has been so much innovation in the last 10, 15 years. But this year, I'm shooting the Matthews No Cam HTR. Now, this bow is absolutely incredible. And I think what makes it so amazing is probably the extra smooth draw cycle. Out of every bow I've ever shot, I've never felt a smoother bow. And the nice part is, is it also has increased efficiency. So if you think about it, you've got a smoother draw. Everything's more efficient. It's putting more energy into your arrow rather than leaving it in the bow that when you shoot and makes noise, now all that energy is going out with your arrow and it's gonna give you better results. Now as far as a bow hunter, everybody's always trying to crank those weights up and have the highest draw weight as possible. Well the nice thing is with this bow, well, you probably can shoot a little higher draw weight because it's so smooth. But one tip that I like to tell people is to go out to the range to shoot over and over and over. The more shooting you can get in, you can find out how quickly you fatigue. There's a couple of factors that you aren't taking into account when you're standing right here at the range. Number one, it's adrenaline. Some people that can help, some people it can hurt and you can't draw your bow. Second thing, you might be wearing extremely bulky clothes, hunting in cold weather, and your body may not react the same. So the last thing you want is too high of a draw weight. Another thing, well, when you're on an elk hunt or spot and stock hunting, you may not get the perfect standing shot. You may be crouched over, you may be on your knees, and if you don't shoot that way, well, you're gonna find out you might be in big trouble in the field. You wanna make sure you try a wide variety of positions and keep your draw weight a little bit less than what you think is needed because it's going to help you in the field. It's not gonna do you any good if you're drawing 70 pounds and uh, that big buck walks right through because you couldn't get to full draw. So really think those things through. So check out the Matthews No Cam HDR. In fact, what I would suggest, go to a bow shop and compare it. Put it next to what you're shooting now or any other bows and you will absolutely feel the difference. This segment was brought to you by Boss Buck. For the most user-friendly and dependable feeder on the market, choose Boss Buck Feeders. Now you're getting serious. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Cuddyback Digital. More deer, fewer blanks. Hard-hitting Easton Arrows. Hunter Safety System. Winchester Repeating Arms. Analogics, protect your deer herd with the power of science. Send killer gold with Hunt Dry technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Rage Broadheads, leading the evolution in lethal technology. Sportsman's Alliance, protecting hunting from coast to coast. Engel Coolers, the original high-performance cooler company. And Golden Triangle Whitetail, your hunt of a lifetime awaits.
After Alberta, well, I wasn't successful, but boy, did we have a great time, and I don't think I'll ever live down the hay bale hopping story. Either way, it was awesome, but next up, I was going to a place that's not necessarily known for the big muley. We were going to Nebraska, and in this location in the Sandhills, well, they truly have world-class mule deer. In fact, there were two 200-inch deer taken that morning when I came into camp. You can't hardly beat a location like this. Plus, the people I was hunting with, just an incredible operation, and Nebraska might just be my new favorite mule deer location. I absolutely love big mule deer, probably like every other hunter across the U.S. And there are a lot of places that you can go after these. Alberta, Colorado, those are some of the main places people think of. The one place that may or may not come to mind, Nebraska. But they are starting to have some of the biggest mule deer that are being put out right now. Every year we're improving and, and expanding and, and our management practices are really showing up. On the last morning of our hunt, as we were getting ready to go out on our first stock, well, we spotted a really nice buck that was bedded up on the hill with another doe. We had a good wind from the area we wanted to come in through, so we decided to get out and get after that buck. Oh, there they are. He's on the opposite bank. Is he still bedded or is he standing? No, he's up. He's up with the doe. They're about 200 yards. Do you want to get just low? Yeah. The mass on That's this thing. That's a freak thing. there. We've been hunting this buck for the past two years. He's uh, really? yeah, he's a six and a half year old buck. He's you just, see, just he's on his way downhill, but man. Look at his body's run down. I and mean, these guys have been rutting pretty hard. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. He's probably a third of the size he was body wise earlier. Really? Yeah, he's they've been running hard. Well, we've been out here hunting with Deer Meadow Outfitters and it's just been a great trip. We got Scott Kuhn guiding me. We've had a lot of fun, <laughs> a lot of laughs, and it's really just been a lot, of, a lot of good times. Seeing a lot of bucks out here as well. So, got a beautiful buck down and what an excellent trip. Tip of the week is brought to you by Field & Street. Trusted brands, timeless traditions. When it comes to deer hunting, of course, we all love seeing big bucks, but what we really want to see is a strong, healthy herd. EHD has decimated some parts of the Midwest, and if there's anything good that can come out of it, it's that people are now concerned and products are being made to keep those herds healthy. Analogix is a veterinary-based company that has put some serious research behind their products. It's simple. Deer with competent immune systems can fight off diseases in the face of challenge. You and I may not know what a deer needs to keep a strong immune system, but that's where Analogix comes in. They didn't just start up a feed company for deer. They've been doing this for years by keeping cattle, pigs, and other livestock healthy. And as avid deer hunters, they decided they needed to do something to make these herds stronger. So they got veterinarians and scientists working side by side to develop sound, scientific-based nutrition that would specifically help our deer herds. Let's say you're trying to help your herd and you're feeding just corn. Corn is an energy source, but not a balanced diet. You wouldn't give your kids just sugar, bread, and carbs, and that's all corn is. 
deer need a balanced diet as well, and Supplement 365 gives them the optimum protein level and year-round nutrition. It also includes Anashield TX4, which is a concentrated deer power pack that helps promote deer health and growth. They even took maps of the U.S. where the biggest bucks are found, match that to the natural minerals there, and use that information in their product. Pretty impressive if you ask me. Analogic scientists develop Supplement 365 to be used year-round, and you should also consider feeding next to a water source. Deer need twice as much water compared to food, so keep this in mind when picking your feeding location. Now I'm no biologist, but after hearing all the research, the scientific studies that have been done, I find it truly amazing to have a company out there that cares so much. Now we can all start having stronger, healthier herds, which will lead to bigger bucks down the road. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester, the American legend. Matthews Archery, catch us if you can. Field and Stream, where traditions begin. ScoutLookWeather.com, download the free Deer Log app for your smartphone. Reinhardt, the best archery targets in the world. Sure Shot Jewelry, check out the Melissa Bachman collection today. And Boss Buck, for the most user-friendly and dependable feeder on the market. Now you're getting serious. Closed captioning is brought to you by Cuddyback Digital. Upgrade to Cuddyback and your images will never look better. After an incredible Nebraska hunt, well, I definitely knew that was a top location for mule deer. But going back to Colorado where I had initially started, well, I was going back again to that exact same property, but this time I was gonna try to film it all myself. Now, there's probably nothing harder than doing an archery mule deer hunt. Well, actually there is. It's called an archery mule deer hunt where you film yourself. I put in the long, long hours, weeks on end, and it finally all paid off. Sometimes it can be very difficult when you get your eyes set on one beautiful buck, but that's kind of what had happened to me in Colorado. I had spotted a beautiful high rack mule deer, and I had gotten in close to him a couple of times, but it really was a game of cat and mouse, and I was trying to figure out where he was going. The hardest part? There were two main food sources in the area that these bucks and all the deer were really using. Now I kind of had to make a decision each day because there was no place that I could watch both. So I either had to choose the alfalfa or the apple. Now I decided to try different setups in different places. I had tree stands, ground blinds, brush blinds. I was mobile trying everything, but it just wasn't coming together. Now a day before, I had seen them filtering through one nice area. So I decided, that's what I'm gonna try. No more trying to stock up on them, it just wasn't working. This time, I was gonna try to get where they wanted to be and hopefully wait them out. One by one, these deer started filing through. Now I was all set up, my camera was on them, but I couldn't stop shaking. I got to full draw and I just waited. As soon as I had my shot, I released my arrow and the coolest thing I had ever seen, I got right back on the camera and this buck went down on camera. I could hardly believe my eyes. I was so excited, and let's just say I did a little happy dance because I was thrilled. Look at this buck. This has been a buck. I have put more time into this guy. I have so much footage of him. Been filming out here on my own, and he is an absolute beauty.
So in the end, you can see there is just fabulous mule deer hunting all around the country. Whether you're in Canada, whether you're across the West, it doesn't matter. And one of the reasons for that is for all the money, for all the conservation that's put back in to preserving that mule deer habitat. And probably one of the best organizations out there is the Mule Deer Foundation. Their number one goal is preserving mule deer. They need a little extra care and they are an absolutely beautiful animal. So it's nice to see wonderful organizations like that, things that we need to help support so that way someday my kids, grandkids, everybody can see all the wonderful hunting that mule deer can offer and we know we were a part of it. Mm -hmm.